All right, so the ellipse, if you remember the definition, it's the set of points in a plane such that the sum of the two distances is constant. And what is that constant again? 2a, that's really important now. The definition of a hyperbola is almost identical. It's, it's the set of points in a plane such that the difference of the distances is constant. And again, that constant is also going to be 2a. So since the definitions are very similar, you can expect a lot of the things to be the same. So in a hyperbola, these are your standard equations. This is all in your notes, by the way. In fact, just look at the notes that I just gave you. So if the x is first, if the x is the positive, then this hyperbola is going to open either to the left, I mean, just left and right, or we say either. But if the y comes first, then this hyperbola opens up and down. That's the difference. And in an ellipse, a squared is always the bigger denominator. But in a hyperbola, a squared always goes with the positive term and b squared will always go to the negative term. So that means sometimes b squared will be bigger than a squared in a hyperbola, but don't let that bother you. So what we gotta do today is we gotta go over all the different parts of the hyperbola, which you, which you did most of it last year. Anyway, the equation that relates a, b, and c in a hyperbola, well, in a, in a ellipse, what was it? c squared equals a squared minus b squared, right? But in a hyperbola, it's a, uh, c squared equals a squared plus b squared. But you guys don't really have to worry, because I'm going to give you the note, right? Because before, you just got to memorize everything. OK, so number 10, basically find all the important parts of the hyperbola. So here we go. Mm, we only can go one side of the board. I might have to erase. So here we go. Y minus 2 squared over 9 minus X minus 1 squared over 16 is equal to 1. Now, how do I know this is a hyperbola? Because it's all going to be mixed up, you know, on Friday's quiz. Because of the minus sign. That means it's a hyperbola. Y comes first, that means it's up and down. The denominator of the positive term is a squared. The denominator of the negative term is b squared. And to figure out c, c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. So in this case, it's what? 9 plus 16, which is 25. Therefore, c is 5. And then, of course, we know a is 3, b is 4. And again, a, b, and c are all positive numbers now, because I know on Friday, some of you are going to get negative numbers, but if it comes out negative, that means you did something wrong. Don't just ignore the minus sign. Okay, so to locate all the different parts of the hyperbola, this is what you need right here, A, B, and C. Okay, so let's go through this. Since, again, we purged a lot of things from last year. So first of all, the center. Where is the center of this hyperbola? Is it 2, 1 or 1, 2? 1, 2. This is, tells you the x, this tells you the y, right? Because there's an x and a y there. So we know the center is at 1, 2. And then remember how we made the rectangular box last chapter? OK. So how much from the center, how much do I go left and right? Do I go 3 or 4? Look, here's the x. x tells you left and right stuff. y tells you up and down stuff. So if you look at this number, b is 4. That means you go 4 left and 4 right. So from the center, you go 4 to the left and 4 to the right. And then how much up and down do I go? 3. So you go 3 up and 3 down. You make the rectangular box. Right, we did this last chapter. Drawing the diagonals, the diagonals are the asymptotes. And is this a left-right hyperbola or up and down? I, I think I just said it one minute ago. 
it's up and down because the Y comes first. So it's going to go. I'm, I'm probably not going to ask you to graph because you guys already did this last year, right? I'm going to ask you like more in-depth questions. Like I give you information and then you write the equation of it. Okay, so what do we call these two points right here? Now, in, a, in an ellipse, we have a major and a minor axis, but in a hyperbola, what do we call this? Anyway, first of all, you've got to know what these two points are called. What are they called? The vertices. Okay, so how do I get to the vertices? Well, how much up and down did I go? Three. So you go three up, so you're going to be at one five, and then you go three down, one negative one, right? So we can't call this the major axis because this one is actually shorter than this one. So do you guys remember what this axis is called, the one that connects the two vertices? It's on the note. It's called the transverse axis. So the length of the trend here, oh, you're right here. <laughs> the transverse axis, the length is equal to 2a. Now, this, these two points, okay, well, first of all, what is this axis called? We can't call it the minor axis because it's bigger than the other one. It's called the conjugate axis. And the length of the conjugate axis is always 2b. That's because you've got to go b left and b right in this case, right? So if I, so this is called, there's no name for these points. We just call it the endpoints of the conjugate axis. So, what are the coordinates of the endpoints of the conjugate axis? Why do I start with 2? Well, if I go 4 to the left, where am I going to be? Negative 3, 2. Negative 3, 2. If I go 4 to the right from the center? 5, 2. So, th again, this is just review from last year. And then the only other thing you did last year is put in the foci, right? What's the distance from the center to the focus in an ellipse? Oh, boy. C. Same thing with the hyperbola. You look at C. See, but see, the, the thing is, in an in ellipse, A is always the biggest. But in a hyperbola, C is always the biggest. So if I go 5 up and 5 down, that's where you're going to get your full side. So 5 up and 5 down. OK, so here's the center. If I go 5 up, where am I going to be? 1, 7. If I go 5 down, where are you going to be? 1, 7. Negative 3. That's what you did last year. Okay, but now we know there's more parts to the ellipse and hyperbola than we thought. So again, if you have a focus, there has to be a directrix. It's going to be on the other side. So you're going to have one directrix here, and another directrix here. Now, what was the distance from the center to the directrix in the ellipse? A squared over C. Same thing with the hyperbola. That's because the definitions are, are very similar. So the distance from the center to the directrix is A squared over C. So in this problem, it's going to be 9 fifths. So that means from the center, just go 9 fifths up and 9 fifths down. So if the Y coordinate here is 2, which is 10 fifths, right? If I go 9 fifths up, where are you going to be? 19 fifths. So the equation of this line is y equal 19 fifths because it's a line now, it's not a point. And then if I go 9 fifths down, where are you going to be? y equal 1 fifth. These are your two directrices. So a squared over c. But again, you don't even have to memorize that this year. Okay, lattice rectum. We got one lattice rectum there, another lattice rectum there. What was the length of the lattice rectum in an ellipse? 2b squared over a. Same thing for the hyperbola. 2b squared over a. So what would that be? b squared times 2. 32 divided by a. 32 thirds. This is the length of the lattice rectum. So of course, if you want to find the coordinates of the endpoints, what's half of 32 thirds? 16 thirds, right? So what you would do is from the focus, you go 16 thirds left and 16 thirds right. That's how you find the endpoints of the lateral recta. Same thing up there. 
This would be 16 thirds and 16 thirds. Now, what is the eccentricity of an ellipse? C over A. Same thing for the hyperbola. So what is C over A? Five thirds. That's all. That's why you need. This is the key. You gotta find these things right there. And notice that in a hyperbola, C is always the biggest. So if C is always bigger than A, then doesn't that mean it's gonna be greater than one? So that's why I told you last time. If the eccentricity is one, it's a parabola. If the eccentricity is less than one, or I guess we can do this, it's an ellipse greater than one hyperbola. And again, the eccentricity will tell you the shape. Like, if you have a hyperbola, is it more like this? Or is it more like this? And like, you know what? I'm not going to tell you which one is it. So if the eccentricity is like 1.001, .001, as opposed to the eccentricity is 999, which one looks like that and which one looks like that? Well, it's the ratio of C to A. I think if you think about it, you can kind of figure it out. C is the distance from the center to the focus. A is the distance from the center to the vertex. So here, why don't we just actually think about it now then. So what if the C is just a little bit bigger than A? So if this is A and C is just a little bit bigger, what would happen if the focus is like really close to the vertex? Does it make it wider or make it thinner? You think about that because I'm not going to tell you. Okay, right there. That's all the important parts of the hyperbola right there. So that's what happened in that example there. Okay, let's go over one more problem. Number 11. That's the last example. Uh, do you think we can squeeze it in here? And every single homework problem, you notice there's a theme, there's a polar problem, right? It's, it's all there. It's very similar. Okay, number 11. Write the equation of the set of points that are three times as far from the point 2 comma negative 3 as from the line y equal 5. Let's draw a picture. Here is the point. No. This is the point 2 negative 3. And here is the line y equal 5. Now if you took the set of points that are equidistant from the two, that's the definition of a parabola. But now I'm saying three times as far from the point. So it has to be three times as far from the point as from the line. So here, let's draw a representative picture like this. Here's a point. This distance always has to be three times that distance. So whatever that is, this distance got to be three times it. You guys understand? Three times as far from the point as from the line. It's not going to be. It's not going to be a parabola. You can probably guess it's going to be a hyperbola. Now, how do you set up that equation? Well, how do you find the distance from here to here? I think you did this in the ellipse worksheet. Use the distance formula. Square root of x minus two squared plus y plus three squared. How do you find this distance? 5 minus y. We discussed this on the ellipse. Here, I'll show you again. Look, uh, I'm going to put it. If you have a horizontal segment, this is 2 and this is 5. How do I know this is 3? This is an important skill in calculus, you know. Right minus left. That will guarantee the distance is positive because there's no such thing as negative distance. So when you have things on a horizontal segment, you go right minus left. That guarantees it po it's positive. Otherwise, you've got to use absolute value. What about a vertical thing? If this is 1 and this is 7, how do I know this is 6? Top minus bottom. That will guarantee it's positive. And every year, you know what students say? Yeah, but what if you're in the negative side? Like, what if this is negative 2 and negative 8? Well, again. How do I know that 6? Top minus bottom. See how it comes out? It comes out positive. OK, so again, what is this distance right here? Top minus bottom, because it's on a vertical segment. So isn't the y coordinate up here 5? Over here it's y, so 5 minus y. Now, if I'm going to make them equal, 
I gotta multiply one side by three, and this is a this is a theme that's been going on the whole year. Some of you are still putting the number on the wrong side. Now, if I want, just think about it, it's just common sense. If I want to make these two things equal, do I multiply the smaller one by three? Or do I multiply the bigger one by three to make them even more unequal? Yeah, you multiply the smaller distance by three if you want to make them equal. That's how you figure out which side it's on if you can't figure it out. Anyway, it says is. Never mind. Just, just think about it like this. And then all you have to do now, see this is the key right here. You set up the problem, and then can you multiply it out and put it in standard form? Yeah, this is just doing algebra, and you will see that it's going to be a hyperbola. It did all the work over there for you. This is the key right here, though. You've got to be able to write this. And just to let you know, I think on last night's homework, didn't you have a problem like this? There was homework last night? Yeah, except I think it, the three is on this side on last night's homework, and then you get, a, you get an ellipse. See, that's the thing. If it were equal, it would be a parabola. If you have a number other than one, it's going to be either an ellipse or hyperbola, depending on which side it is. Okay, so tonight's homework is very similar to the ellipse. Okay, how much time do we have? Three minutes. Now, why do we study hyperbolas? Just so teachers have jobs? You'd be surprised to know the answer is no. Because there's practical applications of it. Okay, so what are, what are the reflective properties of a hyperbola? Okay, here's a hyperbola. Here's one focus. Okay, let's say over here you have a light beam. You aim it at that focus. Okay, here's another focus. You aim it at that focus. So what's going to happen is if there's a reflective surface here, it's going to bounce off, and where do you think it's going to go? It's going to go to the other focus. That's the reflective property of the hyperbola. So by knowing this, what can we do? We can make telescopes. So we've got two minutes left. So how many of you went to Iolani Lower School? Did you guys do space night on the baseball field? Did you guys look through the telescopes? Or are you guys just running around playing like mad, mad, mad people? <laughs> Okay, this is called a Cassegrain, this is a type of telescope. Most of the telescopes that are out there are Cassegrain telescopes. Okay, this is how it works, okay? You get, you get this big cylinder like this. Okay, so when the lights come in from the heaven, the first thing you need is a big parabolic mirror. So this mirror has to be parabolic, not hyperbolic, parabolic. So all the lights that come in from the heavens, what's going to happen? It's going to hit the parabolic mirror. Where is it going to go? To the focus. See, but the problem here, here's the focus. How, how are you going to see that? Are you going to put your head inside the telescope? No. What's somebody thinking? Yeah, there must be. No, you don't put your head in the telescope. You want it directed to the eyepiece. So then what you have now, let, okay, where do you want the eyepiece to be? Say over here somewhere? I, I, I don't know. Wherever you want it to be. Let, okay, let's say there. Now what you do is, then you put a tiny hyperbolic mirror there, and then this, these would be like the two full side of the hyperbola. So all the waves that go to there, when they hit the hyperbolic mirror, then they go to the other focus. And that's where you put the eyepiece. So that's why we study conic sections, because they all have practical applications. All right, we are done. Oh, perfect timing, 30 seconds left. So tomorrow I will show you, did you guys, did you guys remember the Autumn Duck and Mathematic Land when they did all the conic sections? I'm going to show you again, because it's really helpful. Okay, see you tomorrow.